So, so we're off up to the start for the first final of the afternoon session. It's the Stoner Challenge Trophy for women's double skulls. The holders are the New Zealand world champions, Olivia Lowe and Brooke Donoghue. They beat Holland in last year's final. This year, it's an all-British affair. And the camera is just looking at the crew on the buck station. That's Anna Thornton in the stroke seat. I've known her a few years. She came to the Youth Olympic Games under my charge back in Nanjing, where she raced a single skull over a thousand meters on that occasion at that event. And it's great to see her coming up now. I think we're looking at her with her international side. And of course, looking across, we've got the lightweights against them of Exeter University. So we're on the start of the Stoner Challenge Cup for women's double skulls. It's the open double skulls event at Henley in its second year, won by the Kiwis last year. This year it's an all-British affair. On the right of the screen, it's the young double of Hodgkins, Byrne and Anna Thornton, the under-23 double elect, probably favourites for this race. And on the left of your picture, it's the lightweight double of Susanna Duncan and Danielle Semple from Exeter University. You can hear the umpire calling them over there. When I see you are both and straight and ready, route through to the I final. will start you like this. And they Attention. are fast starters, the young Exeter Go. double. So Get ready, please. It should be fireworks in the first uh, three four hundred metres of this race. Attention! Go! Beautiful squeeze on the first part of that stroke, Sarah. Yeah, look at that, Charlotte Hockenberg in the foul seat. She had seen her sister win before lunch in the women's quad, and she will want to put her mark on the race. But the Exeter um, University double, coached by Lorna Tinkler, uh, Laura Norris, as she was, um, will have to stay on with them. Fast, neat start there, and I think they have got the better, cleaner start there. Yeah. I really like the looking at these double skulls just to see how sort of still the, the, the bodies are of these women in the boat and, and you know just how much check they get on the stern off the start because as you know you're up over 40 strokes a minute the tendency is to be a bit hard on the front end and the stern can dip in that way. You look at those lightweights though that stern's running on beautifully isn't it? Yeah really neat there to see the leg driven stroke, the hands as you say picking it up, the body staying pretty still, but using it in that last part of the stroke, and they're going to have to use it all the way down the course if they're going to match the power of Anna and Charlotte in the other boat. It's interesting you say the power, because look at the boat on this side, uh, Charlotte Hodgkins Burn, uh, furthest away from you, 21 years of age, Anna Thornton, the 20-year-old in the stroke seat, and they are rowing longer strokes, they are really trying to use that extra reach, they're, they're taller women, they're heavier women, and they're, they're in the water for longer, but not quite as zippy. Yeah, and it's interesting, isn't it? They've been doing their rowing in um, America and has been out at Washington University and come back here, um, leaving the Huskies, seeing them race earlier on in, in the week and coming to do international duty. And that is working well for them now. You can see the water, Martin, this afternoon. It's a bit more poppy than we've seen it. Yeah, do you think that's record times? Um, you know, we don't get the times as quickly in the country box, but these are very fast conditions. And, and, you know, ideal conditions, Sarah, for lightweights to ride. Yeah, I think it is. Of course, it's going, to come, it's going to be quick conditions out there. Only the second year of this event, so we'll have to keep an eye on the clock. So that's just a one-length margin coming up to the first marker of the course. That's the barrier, just over two minutes in, and uh, the impassive features of uh, Anna Thornton. I was asking Pete Shep, the under-23 coordinators, coordinator what she was like and he said well she's kind of the quieter of the two uh, Charlotte Hodgkins Byrne is a bit of a live wire just a bit like her sister something in the Hodgkins Byrne gene and um, you will know Anna well of course being chef de mission she's such a, a tall sort of striking figure she holds her back really quite sort of strong in her core isn't she very very tall and upright off the back end of the stroke and these ladies would have lined up against each other, I'm sure, in the past. Lots of experience in these boats, lots of Henley experience in the Diamond Jubilee and the quad event that we saw before lunchtime. But now in this new event, the Stoner Challenge Trophy, they will be the winners of this race, the first ones to receive that trophy, but the second ones to have their name on it. 
Absolutely, the Stoner uh, Valley and uh, Country House is, is not far away from Henley. Beautiful setting and that trophy named after that uh, lovely idyllic place. So uh, these two women, Charlotte Hodgkins Byrne and Anna Thornton, were bow and two in the under 23 quads that uh, took the gold medal at that event last year, beating Austria, Australia and Germany with uh, Saskia Budget and Lucy Glover at that time. So really they are extremely experienced, extremely talented young women. And uh, in, in an event which I, I guess was that the first medal that you won in the Olympics that, that Britain took in this event, the women's double skull, Sarah? I think it was the only medal I won in the Olympics. It no, was, no, yeah. for, for Great Britain. I'm thinking that was the first time that Britain won um, an Olympic medal in that women's event. Yeah, you're right. And, and I'd like to think I inspired Catherine Granger and others to come into that event and, and do it. it. It's been hugely successful since, hasn't it? Yeah, well, I always like to think, you know, it was good the medals I won without Steve Redgrave on board. And I mean, you must be chuffed that you, you got that bronze medal without KG on board. <laughs> Uh, Elise Laverick, big shout out to my partner on that occasion. Um, yes. How are they sculling differently to the way your double moved back then in the Athens Olympics, Sarah? Well, I think if you look there, we actually did our sprint. We did a Mahe Drysdale with our sprint with two and a half minutes to go on on that occasion. It was a very expensive and, and um, painful bronze medal. But let's, let's look at the rowing here. You can see how far they're pressing it here. The lightweight double of Susan Duncan and Danielle Sample, a really talented double that I think we're going to see later on in the year as well. But this is fantastic. They will just have equaled the record to Forley. They've equaled that amazing Kiwi record, um, the Kiwi double, but their record conditions this year are, are, are quick and we've got that record and they will not only, I think, be on the trophy, Martin, they're going to be in the record books too. That's absolutely right. The uh Stoner record was set by Brooke Donahue and Olivia Lowe of 3.38 and you could see the time on the board and it just shows you conditions are absolutely scorching not, not just for everybody around in the enclosures um, but also out on the water because the record pace is phenomenal and I tell you what, you know, to have a Henley record, you know, for under 23s is just such a prize isn't it? It is, and this is the uh, joy of the new events, if you like. You know, it's um, they're being um, ha haven't had years and years and years yet. So, good conditions, good crews will be able to win, break those records as we go on. And look at this! Look how they're working together. You can see how lovely it is to press the legs, the opening the backs, the flatness of the oars, and just picking it up with their hands. Well, the world's best time over 2,000 meters is six minutes 37 set by the Australians in 2014 but the Kiwis were only two seconds out of that at the World Cup last year so you can see how quickly this uh, young under 23 British double of Charlotte Hodgkins Byrne and Anna Thornton have moved down the course and correspondingly that will mean that these two uh, lightweights from Exeter, Susan Duncan furthest away from you in the Exeter double on this side of the course and Daniel Semple are also moving very quickly Sarah. Yeah, what an experience, man. This is um, um, both under 23s, but probably the future of um, British sculling that we're looking at here, Martin. What a privilege to watch the lightweights on the left and the heavyweights that we're looking now on the right. And we always talk about a big, a good, big one will be a good little one. And that's actually what's happening here. We have two world class crews here. Yeah, we've seen this in the women's doubles, or we're seeing it in the women's doubles. We saw it in the men's doubles today with that, that great uh, skull by uh, Jack Bowman and Angus Groom beating the uh, sensational O'Donovan brothers, the lightweights from Ireland, and it's history repeating itself in the women's version of the double skulls. Anna Thornton and Charlotte Hodgkins Byrne have got about 10 strokes to go to the finish. Yeah, they'll be enjoying these crowds here on the final day, cheering them through the enclosures. So here we come, just the final few strokes, a, a, a look from Charlotte hodgkins Burn. It is a long course, but yes, Charlotte, you have won that coveted Henley medal with the red box. It's the crew from University of London in Nottingham Rowing Club who take that title ahead of the crew from Exeter University, Duncan and Semple.
with that there. You see how hot it is out there. They just want to get cooled. And the time we're looking out for, we'll see if it could be a record, is 7.27. Um, but they're waiting there respectfully, making sure that they can thank their opposition, cheer each other in.